uh, I think, you know, I discussed a couple of times the objective problems, objective solution. Subjective problem, subjective solution. I cannot solve subjective problems by objective means. There is no possibility. So objective problems, there you have pointed out the problem of the food, the shelter, the clothes. I have to find in the material world. I have to, I have to work. I have to earn or I have to use these objective means to solve my objective problems. I'm hungry. I have to eat food from outside. How can I produce the food inside me? There is no possibility. And the subjective problems? Subjective problems are existential problems. What are those existential problems? I have an anxiety. Where, where you have an anxiety in the mind? Dissatisfaction in the mind. You see, insecurity in the mind. Don't you see 8 billion people are living? There is no war there except in, <laughs> except in Ukraine. Existential. That is existential problem. Mm -hmm. So don't think that where there is no war, the people are not suffering. <laughs> that is the problem. That is uh, Eastern wisdom helps us to see, to perceive in a right manner. We have to see the problem. War, yes, it has a problem. But we are already struggling. We are already living in the in the war all the time. You wake up in the morning and you are you are stressed. Is it not a war? Is this war less important than the war that is taking place outside? So coming back to our own uh, basic Eastern wisdom, that it clearly says objective problems, objective solutions, subjective problems, subjective solution. First thing. Now second thing, which one is more serious? <laughs> which one is so, more so. obviously if I don't have a food I cannot even listen to the talk <laughs> so there there there's a lot of confusion in it so if I do not survive physically then I cannot listen so I have to survive physically so that mind that lives in the body can ask the question and can find the answer. See that? So there is a lot of debate. Uh, you see that beauty of the Eastern wisdom is that one master picks up one question, second master picks up that question and, and it raises one, 100 questions and that then it answers. Then whatever is left by the second master, the third master picks up and then he answers the question. That is the beauty. So that is why we say it is a continuity, it's a tradition. That is why we say it. So now the master says physical survival is very important so that the conscious mind lives in this in this human body conscious mind does not live in the tiger's body does not live in the mosquito body so survival means food shelter and the clothes so again Objective problem, objective solution. But if I do not, you know, a lot of people say that I will go to the Himalayas and start doing the practice of meditation. I will do tapasya, tapa, austerity and penance. You are crazy. You are already, you can convert your day-to-day -day life in austerity. Are you getting enough to feed yourself? 
Do you have enough to uh, feed few others? That is the human nature. It should be the human nature. So what happens now? There comes the biggest problem. The objective, oh, look at uh, the best example of, have you heard about Sam Free? Who, who started with the Bitcoins and uh, he invited uh, uh, thousands of people to spend in Bitcoin and they will, he will uh, give the 50% or 500% return. So he earned almost, he collected maybe I think $15 billion. And now he is in a prison. Uh, he got a bail of $250 million. And two of his colleagues, unfortunately or fortunately, they were Indians. They were also caught and put into the prison. Now, Eastern wisdom says, why you want to earn so much of money? That is the question. Can a billion dollar get you rid of the fear insecurity? The answer is no. So it cannot solve the subjective problem. It cannot solve your subjective problem. It can help you feed yourself and also feed others. That is the question master raises that if you have more than enough, it is better to feed others so that you will have a sense of detachment and dispassion with the money. Your mind will be qualified to take care of your subjective problems. That, that is the message master gives. Why should I give? That is the impurity of the mind. <laughs> master says, that is your impurity of the mind. Why it is an impurity of the mind? You see, the Eastern wisdom, it asks the question. It says, no, you have to understand that. Why it is an impurity of the mind? So the one question is same. What you will do with so many millions of dollars so that you have to pay $250 million for a bailout? That is the first thing. What, how much... The wealth can take care of me. How much? I have to sleep in only one bed. I may have a big mansion. <laughs> I can drive only one car at a time. I can fly in only one plane at a time. After a certain limit, I cannot eat even if I like. Five bread, four bread, three bread. After that, uh, the body says no. 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 Now see what a human being has done. That causes the impurity. There are certain things should be done according to the law. Insurance. Car insurance. Home insurance. Life insurance. Medical insurance. Yes. If there is a availability and I, there is a law, I should follow it. I should follow it. No problem at all. In every society. Now the entire world is moving towards. But question is, does the insurance takes care of my insecurity and a fear? So I should no. remove that part into my mind. I should remove. No, there is no subject. Uh, there is no objective solution of my objective problems. Insurance is okay. If I if I remain alive, so <laughs> that money will be used to take care. It's okay. It's a part of the life. It's a part of the modern life. It is okay. But I have to solve the problem of insecurity, dissatisfaction, unhappiness that is lying in my mind. The moment I solve it, I will not become the Sam Freed. So first he was caught in Bahamas 
and then he was brought to U.S. He is a U.S. citizen. You know, in U.S. everything happens, you know. <laughs> so he has to pay $250 million for a bail, but still, uh, you know, some, some kind of a tracking is uh, tied to his leg. So he cannot leave the anyway. Yeah. So what? Ha why it is tied? Why you have to pay two fifty million dollars? Only because you thought this wealth is going to take care of everything in my life. For, forget about the law. Forget about the law and law of the system. It cannot happen. It does not happen. But I don't understand it. That misunderstanding is impurity. That misunderstanding is impurity. But why this is impurity? Because I am attached to it. I have a desire. I have a craving. I have a, <clears throat> I have, you know, a delusion that this will happen and I will not be caught, for example, in case of Sam Free, I will not be caught. No, no, it is going to happen sooner or later. Going back, so first thing, if I survive physically and I am physically fit, then only I can start the journey of the self-discovery. There is no possibility. I'm suffering. I have an acute pain in the body. I'm already attached. I cannot take care of it. So that is the minimum. Minimum survival needs is required. Once that is met, that, then my mind must look into the subjective problems of insecurity, of fear, <clears throat> of anxiety, of duality, of a conflict, why they are present in me. And what exactly is the purpose of life? What exactly it is? What is the purpose of I have to look into this carefully. Now see, I have to look into that carefully. So that means the self-inquiry. Now the self-inquiry, here the master proposes, or well, every master proposes, that this self-inquiry should be based on three factors. Who am I? Who has the insecurity? Who has the fear? I understood the object, I solved the objective problems of my food, shelter and the bread. And I have understood clearly that without solving the objective problems body will continue to suffer, so I have to take care of it. Now the self-inquiry, three factors. Who am I? See the beauty, I'm just, and I remember teachings of one master, that is great. So who am I? What is this world outside? And what is the real self? So the masters discussed in detail that real self is of the nature of peace, happiness, love and wisdom. It says it is pure consciousness. It says that is real self. It says, they say, all the masters declare in just one voice that there is an entity, whether you say real self, whether you say pure, pure consciousness, whether you say Sat Chetanand, whether you say that you enter into total emptiness, nothingness, with reference to the external world, 
you will awaken to the real self. Now see, why the master said it is Satchidanand? Because those students who went to the master with a lot of doubts that if I have a lot of the wealth, I'll be able to take my take care of myself. But that wealth is constantly changing. You cannot control the wealth. Without the exchange of the wealth, you cannot get the pleasure. And there is no surety that even if you spend billions of dollars, you can get the. So that is why they explain sat existence, permanent, all pervading. So it depends on the nature, the temperament of different students. The teachers came out with the different ideas, different concepts. Either you say it's a pure consciousness, done. You say Satchidaran, it is done. You say real self, it is done. There is no disagreement amongst the masters. So now you see that, see. So where the self-inquiry leads to, that is also very important to pick up. I pick up with that understanding. So who am I? Okay. What is the word? Yes, and what is the real self? Now the master says, it gives you hundreds of examples. You see the water in the mirrors. So mirrors, water does not exist. So it is caused by the sand in the desert. So what you should do, you should negate in the mind. You should negate in the mind that water mirrors. So you have a reality. Similarly, who am I at present, the way I feel I am, and the way I experience the world outside should be negated in the knowledge. I want to make it clear here. When I say negated, negated does not mean that you refuse to accept. Knowledge of the real self does not make, let me rephrase it. Knowledge of the real self does not make the false disappear. what it means. That is why, you know, it seems complex, but it's not complex. It's very easy. What it means? It means I know the wave is a false. I continue to see the wave even after knowing that it is water. I continue to see the water in the mirage even when I know it is a mirage phenomenon. I continue to see this girl is my wife knowing there is no wife. What it means? So you see that, you know, I'm picking up a lot of uh, things and you have already, we have already discussed. We are not talking of untruth. There is a truth, there is a real, there is an unreal, the untruth, but there is a false. The false contains something of the real and something of the unreal. What is unreal? That does not exist. So what does not exist? The water in the mirage does not exist. But there is a truth in it. It appears to exist. I'm solving one of the biggest challenges that we all have in reaching to the highest state of meditation. Why I said so? The false will continue to ex appear to exist even when I realize the real self, when I am awakened to the real self. Otherwise, I cannot say anything. I cannot speak. I cannot speak. But when I am using the word I, 
that I is a conscious mind, that there is no I. Finish. I'm using for the sake of convenience. I'm using for the sake of length. Again, go back to the same examples. Water appears as a wave. That much is true. The wave does not have an independent existence because it is water, so it is untrue. So wave will continue to, I will be, I will continue to see the wave. But I know in the mind, water is the main. Earth is stationary. I will continue to see the earth is stationary, otherwise I cannot walk. But earth is not stationary. Science proves it. See that? See? So what it means, I have discovered the real self. This is the process of negation. What I negated? Who am I? The way I feel I am. I am stress negated. Why I negated? Who created this in this sentence? I am in stress. I came from the mind. Intellect. Or the same in Antekar and inner instrument. And stress is an experience in the mind. So mind divided itself into two. I am in stress. I am not worthy of suffering. I negated it. I negated. This is false. The I is false. Who am I? That I is false. How dare you say I am your husband? Why don't you listen to me? That is false. There is no husband. So when I negate the husband, then I don't need to fight. I don't need to create any problem. So I am not a problem to anyone in the world because I is negated. Which I? False I. So will the false eye will come to an end all the time? No. It will continue to make its presence. Because I have to live in the material transactional world. But now I know I am the real self. The other eye that I am using is just a wave. It is just a blueness of the sky. It is same thing, the earth is stationary. It is the water in the mirage. Let me use it and finish it. I'm not speaking. So when I'm not speaking, I could see the real self in full expression. Only in silence the real self manifests. But now I'm talking, still the real self is there. I'm talking, it's a wave. So this problem is solved only when we follow each and every step of the Eastern West. We will start the journey. This master who lived almost 150 years ago from now and uh, uh, I love this, uh, his teaching and his uh, text. It is known as Vichar Sagar. The literal translation of Vichar Sagar is uh, Vichar Sagar. Sagar means ocean, Vichar means thought. Ocean of thoughts that results into realizing the real self. Okay, then uh, how many chapters? That is, there are seven chapters. So, what the chapters are known as? Chapters are known as waves. Ocean of wisdom or ocean of thought, of real self. Ch seven chapters are each chapter is known as wave. And the topics are known as ripples. So he concluded the entire journey into perhaps 
uh, topics. So ripples into something around 578 or 580 ripples. And how he proceeded with the journey? He raised the same question as the material man raises the question. That becomes one topic. Then he removes the doubt and he answers that. Then he goes to the second topic. Then he goes, he raises the question that we have in our mind, the doubt, there is no clarity. Then he answers that question. He has picked up all the doubts in the form of a questions and then he answers. He, and then he asks you, tell me if it is not true or not. So when you follow that, you are already in the state of real self. So in the middle, you see that you are the real self, but he says, no, I have another doubt. Can you answer me? No. Un understand the answer. And so he summarized, if I say he summarized 300 Upanishads, he summarized the teachings of Gita, he summarized the teachings of Ashtavakra Gita in 578 topics. Coming back. Negation. Negation. Don't take negation as a reaction, as a suppression, as a control of the thought. Wave will continue to, I continue to see the wave, but I know it is water. I continue to have millions of the thoughts, but now they are not disturbed because my mind is pure. And now I recognize that they are the ripples of the mind and I am not the mind. Same thing, earth is not stationary, wave is not there, wave appears, water appears as a wave, huh? the mirage water appears due to this and I know all this, so, so there is no problem. I have millions of thoughts, I can be in the state of meditation. I have no thought, I am still in meditation. <laughs> so normally what we feel that let me control these thoughts, so I am moving in a wrong direction. I am moving in a wrong direction. So wrong direction means the impurity of the mind. Impurity of the mind results into ignorance. Ignorance causes the suffering. I tried to control my thoughts for 20 years and after 20, in the 21st year, the same thought returned. And that is explained by, <laughs> it's, it's a good, that is explained by another master. Uh, about uh, the second master, Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra was the great master in the kingdom of Rama. So, because in the beginning he wanted to control all the thoughts of uh, the sexual pleasure. And after 10 years he thought that now he has been able to control it. 11th year, uh, there is a beautiful woman and he was caught into that pleasure. So the, the, the symbolic expression, what is symbolic expression that this is what the thought does it. So my approach of controlling the thought is wrong. My approach of forcing the wave to become the water is wrong. Wave is already water. You see that? That is the beauty of this Eastern wisdom. That Eastern wisdom says, oh, let us pick up another way to understand. So it lays too much of importance in, on the knowledge. In philosophy, we have a branch of, we have a branch in philosophy that is known as epistemology. What is epistemology? how I get the knowledge of anything. You wake up in the morning, you get a knowledge that you were lying on the bed, then you go to the restroom, so you have a knowledge of the restroom, you cook and prepare a cup of tea, you have a knowledge of the tea, you have the knowledge of the food, you have the knowledge of the clothes, you have the, uh, you, 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 you have the knowledge, that's why we are together at this moment. 
You see, knowledge, 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 knowledge. Without knowledge, I cannot act. Do you see that? Without knowledge, I cannot act. So when I understand the very process of knowledge that is taking place in my mind, then I can easily approach the knowledge of the real self. <laughs> knowledge of the real self. I know you what it means, what are the factors involved in knowing you. Person, an object, you are an object. Object plus thought of an object, thought of an object, because that thought gives me the knowledge that I am speaking to you. See that, object, you are an object, object of thought, plus conscious mind is equal to knowledge of you. I know that I'm going very high and then I will return back and we will uh, <laughs> talk about. You see, but, uh, I know, I know washroom. So washroom is an object. Yeah. There, there's a thought of an object plus conscious mind is the knowledge. You, you pick up this formula for any knowledge that you know. Any, any point you say that I'm aware of it, I know it, I experience it, this formula will apply. But any manifestation, it's only because knowledge. Any manifestation because of the knowledge and that in the space and in the time, the, its knowledge manifested. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I know the time and that is knowledge. Now, what and masters are saying here, what masters are saying here, you will get, and it, you have to contemplate and reflect again and again, millions of times. What is that? So did I understand the way I get a knowledge? Yes, I have understood. Okay, now apply the same to the knowing how to know the real self. Real self is pure consciousness. So now, okay. So real self is an object? No. For example, just apply the same principle. We'll come out of it. Real self is an object? Okay. What it is? Pure consciousness. Plus a thought of that object, real self. Plus, plus what? Conscious mind. No, real, real self. self is already consciousness. I don't need a conscious mind. That is why we say meditation is transcending the mind. <laughs> again, again, pay attention. Sun. Sun gives the light, be in the presence of the light, I know different objects. Do I need a candle to know the sun? Candle is just like a mind. So the knowledge of the material world means object, thought of an object, plus the mind. And mind is a, take an example, the mind is nothing but the moonlight. Mind is the moonlight. And the real self is the sun. <laughs> but my, mind is also knowledge. Yes. But mind is a knowledge, moon has a moonlight because of the sun. <laughs> from, from, from one side, mind is a knowledge, from other side, the mind is ignorance. Mind is ignorance. So, Master says you don't need a mind to know the real self because the real self, real self, real self is knowledge itself. The real self is consciousness itself. So now what I see, I simply 
sit. I simply sit. It is just sitting. That is known as the Jen meditation. Just I'm sitting. Mind has come. Moonlight. Finished. Not required. So when that moonlight is not required, still I am aware. Still I am. I exist with the mind. I exist without the mind. I exist with the thought. I exist without the thought. I exist with the pain. I exist without the pain. Yeah. And but that exists. I is known as existence and that existence is Sat. Because it is Sat. Who knows this Sat? Sat has the property of consciousness. So they are not two. It is one. No, no, no. You are raising a lot of uh, doubt. Uh, my power of speech does not exist without me. So that such existence itself is consciousness and that very consciousness is nothing but the knowledge. So there is no duality, there is no two. Ananda, that is why it is of the nature of Ananda, that is what the Satchitananda is. Or you can directly uh, follow the Buddhism and they say, oh, it's a pure consciousness, nothingness is there. Okay, Nothingness, why they say nothingness? Because the mind creates a problem of I-ness. When I say I am in stress, that I is the mind and stress is the mind and that very knowledge is also the mind. And I'm confused. And I confuse others. Don't you realize that I have a lot of stress? Why should I realize your stress? It is the same mind. I'm suffering, don't you see that? No. That very I is the mind, the knowledge of the suffering is the mind, and the very suffering is the mind. So objective knowledge, we get by these three factors, subjective knowledge, we say minus mind. Now go back to the same principle. Self-inquiry should be inquired with the three factors, who am I, what is the world, and what is the real self. So that I is the mind and the world, that includes my pleasure, my suffering, my duality, my conflict, my relationship, that is the world. So both are negated. So when both are negated, then what is left? Real self. That is the meaning of living in a moment. Simply saying, you know, I'm living in a moment. You are in stress and you are living in a moment. Thank you. Keep living in stress. That will not work. That will not work. That will not work. Another doubt, you know, I'm picking up uh, some of the... Uh, teachings of this master, Nishtal Das. This is the Nishtal Das. Then what happened that this Nishtal Das uh, wrote this text. Then, then there was another master in the South India. He translated the Hindi text into the Sanskrit and he added more points. That is the beauty of the tradition, that they don't leave any doubt. Without doubt, Freedom, how to free from yourself from the doubt? By contemplation and reflection. Practice will not remove the doubt. Practice will remove your restlessness. See that? Practice will remove your restlessness. You know, we should, we should continue the practice. So now coming, going back again, I'm missing the point. And we will start following this uh, uh, step by step. So I'm just talking in from the between. So when I negate, negate does not mean any kind of suppression, force, action. 
it means I'm not a doer. I'm not a doer. So I dissolve the doer created by the mind falsely by negating. That is why we use the word negation. Negation has nothing to do with forcing the mind, controlling the mind. No, 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 no. Nothing at all. I negate it. Earth is stationary. I negate it. I know earth is constantly moving. I negate your virtual image. We are having a virtual session. So that I'm talking to you directly. I'm not talking to a virtual image. This we do it all the time. And we don't do with the real self. We don't do it with the real self. We don't do with the real self. And when we are attached, then you say I'm talking to the wife. I'm not talking to the women. So when you are talking to the wife, you always have a problem. You talk to the women, there is no problem. You try to grab the water mirage, it is not possible. So when I am talking to a woman, so that woman has a different temperament, different attitude, so what should I do? Let it happen. Let me, that, that is my perception, but that is your perception, so live with it. So my mind is not come, you know, object, a thought of an object. I'm going to something bigger, object, thought of an object plus the conscious mind is equal to knowledge, knowledge of the world outside. So by understanding that knowledge of the, that process of the knowledge, I know this mind divides into three and gives me the knowledge gives me the knowledge. Now I want to know my real self. So now if the object is the real self, that object is pure consciousness. That already is a knowledge. So now, uh, uh, now I see the object, thought of an object. What, I, what is the thought of an object? I am real self. Finished. Mind is not there. So even when I express that I am the real self, I realize, I know that I am the real self. <laughs> Who comes? Mind. With all its impurity and ignorance and restlessness. And that my suddenly says, oh, you are talking of I. No, I am suffering. Come on. That is mind. Why I don't recognize? Because of the impurity of the mind. What are those impurities? We already have a lot of discussions on those impur impurity of the mind. You can say it is delusion, it is ignorance, it is, it is pride, it is desire, it is greed, it is... Huh? It is anger, it is hesitation, it is duality, it is a conflict. So Master says, why don't you realize they do not, they appear, they appear to exist. What is our daily living? That peace appears to exist, but anger has definitely exist. Hesitation definitely exists. Look at those people who are suffering from mental disorders. Look at those split personality. Look at those uh, bipolar. No, no, it it surely exists. What does not exist is peace. Such a deeper level of ignorance. Moral psychology is based on deeper level of ignorance. You force, the doctor forces you that you are suffering from anxiety. Means you are anxiety, you are not the peace. So first you are diagnosed that you are anxiety, you are depression, you are split personality and now you want to say calm down. That is why I left modern psychology. First it makes you believe, understand that you have recognized that you have a serious problem. 
They are suffering <laughs> from depression. <laughs> yes, they fix you like problem. And the problem continues. So always I take medicine. My object of thought is I am depressed. <laughs> you will remain depressed. <laughs> you will remain. We say, what we are saying that identification is the wave. Identification is false. You have to negate in the mind. When you do not negate in the mind, then you have to depend on medication. You have to depend on the feedback by the doctor all the time that you are suffering. That is the feedback. No, no, suffering is now 5% or suffering may be 50%. So you return, you return to the next week and they say, no, I had a lot of problems. Oh, the suffering is now 60%. I will increase the dose. What the heck you're talking about? So this is the problem in our, in our human endeavor, the process of knowledge. So that is why we see Eastern wisdom is an instrument of knowledge. You should understand the very process by which you acquire the knowledge of a stress, of an anxiety, and of the peace and happiness. The result is, you, you realize that peace is your essential nature, and the rest of the challenge is the insecurity, the fear, and the problems are false. Because they are false, so you are not worthy of the suffering. You are not worthy of suffering. Mm -hmm. 